Five unsolved mysteries caught on camera is what I'm going to react to today. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to my world. It's Classy's world. Another day, another scary video reaction. Yeah, last time I reacted to Nuke's top five, I almost cried. You know how much I hate crying on YouTube, but yo, at the same time, that's the most thrilling videos I react to, so I enjoy it a lot. So that's why today we react to this one right here. Before we check it out, you already know what you gotta do. Grab some water, drink with me, because water is the key to a better life. And you, my friends, gotta stay hydrated. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's jump right into it. Are y'all ready? Let's go. The Top 5 Mysterious Unsolved Cases Jackie Sutton In late October 2015, seasoned British journalist Jackie Sutton arrived at a Turkish airport to catch her connecting flight to Iraq, where she'd been working with the free speech organization IWPR. Hours later, she was found dead in an airport restroom. Reportedly, Jackie Sutton had committed suicide, hanging herself using one of her own shoelaces. Now here's where things get even stranger. Earlier reports by the Turkish media stated that Jackie Sutton had become very upset after missing her flight to Iraq because she couldn't afford to purchase a new ticket. What? However, later reports revealed that Sutton could have... Yo, his voice and the melody and the storytelling. Yo, I got goosebumps. ...easily paid for a new ticket. She was found carrying over 2,000 euros and two credit cards. What? Even more suspicious. Another security camera clip taken shortly before Jackie Sutton's death shows her carrying what appears to be a shopping bag containing purchases made at the duty-free shop in the airport. Critics have argued that it seems highly unlikely that Jackie Sutton would suddenly decide to do a bit of shopping shortly before committing suicide. So was Jackie Sutton's death a suicide or something more sinister? Of course Let me not. know what you think in the comments below. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I think. Of course, that wasn't suicide. Look at all the evidence proving that she was ready to leave. She was ready to continue her life on this planet. Like, bro, why would you go shopping and not use whatever you just bought and commit suicide? Like, that doesn't make sense at all. Why commit suicide when you have money and you go shopping? Like, bro. Be smart about it. Oh. Lars Matank. Lars Matank was a young German man who went on a holiday trip with friends to Varna, Bulgaria. While there, Matank was involved in a fight with some other tourists and suffered a ruptured eardrum. Because of the ear injury, Lars Matank was unable to fly, so he couldn't return to Germany with his friends. He rented a room in a hostel in a poor area of Varna, Bulgaria, determined to wait until his ear had healed enough so that he could fly back to Germany. However, okay, so why does your ear prevent you from flying? Like, I know it's injured, but why do you need your ear to fly? Like, that's a stupid question, I know, but why do you need your ear to work properly in order to fly back home? That same night, Lars Matank called his mother and said that there was something strange about the hostel that he was staying in and that she should cancel all of his credit cards. Even later that same night, Lars Matank left his hostel room in a panic, headed for the airport. He called his mother again, this time saying that four strange men were following him and that he was hiding. Two hours later, Lars Matank caught a cab and arrived at the Varna airport in the early morning hours. On airport security cameras, Lars can be seen entering the airport with his luggage. What the but minutes later, he is seen running from the airport in a panic, leaving his luggage behind. Eyewitnesses say that Lars Matank ran to a barbed wire fence that surrounds the airport, climbed over the fence, and then disappeared into some nearby woods. To this day, Lars Matank has never been found. His family asked that anyone with any info as to his current location contact them via their website or Facebook page. I honestly have goosebumps and I can't even... 
why was he running? Like right now I have so many questions in my head. Like why was he running? What was happening in that hostel? How he, how he arrived at the airport? And what did he see there? Why did he leave his baggage there? And why did he run into the woods? <laughs> I won't be able to sleep this night, for reals. Brian Schaefer. One of the strangest disappearances on record is that of Brian Schaefer, an Ohio State medical student. On March 31, 2006, Brian Schaefer decided to go out for a night on the town with some of his college friends. They met at the Ugly Tuna Saluna, an upstairs bar at Ohio State's South Campus. Brian can be seen arriving at the bar with his two friends. They're smiling and laughing as they exit the escalator to the second floor bar. Around 10 p.m., Brian called his longtime girlfriend, with whom he had planned a spring break getaway to Miami a few days later. Brian told her that he loved her and would see her soon. Brian's girlfriend said that the call was nothing out of the ordinary. Later, Brian Schaefer is seen again on security camera near the escalators, talking to two girls. He seems to say goodbye and then heads back into the bar. Well, Brian Schaefer was never seen again. Security cameras covering the only exits of the Ugly Tuna Saluna bar do not show Brian Schaefer ever leaving. The only possible other exit would have been through an area of the bar that was under heavy construction at the time and closed off to the public. However, even if Schaefer had left through the construction area, there are multiple other security cameras in the bar's vicinity. None of these cameras picked up footage of Brian Schaefer ever leaving the bar. It's almost as if Brian Schaefer disappeared into thin air in the middle of a crowded bar. That's not the first time things like that happen. Tupac was shot in Las Vegas. So many CCTV cameras could have caught what really happened cameras didn't work that day or some shit. Alan Jill On the evening of February 23rd, 2014, Alan Jill took a strange trip through Cornwall, England. Captured by surveillance cameras, Jill spent his evening wandering the streets of several different cities for hours. He was seen in Wadebridge, then traveled by bus to Truro, then on to Newquay, then back to Perrinporth. No one knows why Alan Jill took this strange trip or what he was doing wandering the streets of four different cities all night. Four different the next morning, cities. the dead body of Alan Jill was found washed up on the shore of Perrinporth Beach. Jill was naked except for one sock and one shoe. But the story gets even stranger. Alan Jill's other sock was found wadded up inside his mouth, wrapped in the cord of a pair of earbud-type headphones. Near his body was a black jacket containing a wallet with 95 British pounds, but his bank cards, credit cards, and ID were missing. However, the wallet contained a single bizarre picture, Alan Jill as a child. Even stranger, the jacket the wallet was found in was not the one that Alan Jill had been wearing on the night of his death. Initially, Alan Jill's death was thought to just be a very strange suicide. However, an autopsy revealed multiple unexplained injuries to Alan Jill's right hand, chest, and head. Police ruled the death as suspicious. The case still remains unsolved, and no one knows exactly what happened to Alan Jill. Well, I can explain what happened. Somebody decided to, to take his credit cards, right? And they beat him to death or some shit like that. And they just had fun with the corpse by putting a sock in his mouth and the headphones and all of that. Like, yo, it can be easily explained, but why was he wandering for cities? That's strange. It's like he was running Jameson from something. family. One of the most bizarre disappearances in recent history is that of the Jameson family of Eufaula, Oklahoma. Pastor Gary Brandon claims that the Jamesons told him that their home was haunted by angry spirits. Oh, wow. The Jamesons said that they had made contact with the spirits of a dead family in their house and that their six-year-old daughter, Madison, often talked to the ghost family's child. The Jamesons said that two of the ghosts... The six-year-old daughter speaks to the ghost of the house. 
How scary is that? Like, how scary is that? You know, I'm actually afraid of kids' ghosts. I'm afraid of them for... For real. The ghosts were called Emily and Michael, and that Emily. one of the apparitions had wings like an angel. Wow. Allegedly fearing for the safety of his family, Bobby Jameson had asked Pastor Brandon if there were quote-unquote special bullets that he could use to fight off the intruding spirits. Pastor Brandon also said that Jameson mentioned that he had obtained a quote-unquote satanic Bible in order to attempt to ward off the ghostly beings. On October 8, 2009, the Jameson family... Look, y'all, I don't know how real this witchcraft and shit is, but I kind of believe it, you know, like... I don't know if it's real, but I kind of believe it. Yo, you've done it to yourself. You bought a dark, you brought a dark book into your house. And one of the ghosts had wings like an angel. You see the connection right here? You see what I'm trying to say? Like, yo. They loaded their pickup truck for a trip. They can be seen on their own front yard security camera, moving things from their house to their truck. Bizarrely, the family seems to be in some sort of daze or trance-like state, making dozens of trips back and forth from the house to the truck, but never talking to each other once. After loading the truck, the Jamisons pulled out of the driveway and were never seen alive again. What the Eight fuck? days later, the Jamisons' pickup truck was found by the side of the road. Locked inside the truck were the Jamisons' wallets and IDs, their cell phones, and $32,000 cash. Also locked inside the truck was the family's small dog, which was nearly dead from starvation. A massive statewide search was launched for the family over the next eight months, but nothing was found. Multiple theories were circulated, one that Bobby and Cheryl and Jameson had been meth users and had been involved in a meth deal gone bad. This theory would also explain their trance-like state yeah, in the final- Yeah, I just wanted to say, it would explain why they were behaving this way while loading the truck. Yo, this is crazy. This could be it. But then again, yo, what about the daughter? What about the daughter who spoke with the ghost? Final video of the family. However, absolutely no evidence of drug use was found when police searched the Jamison family home. Four years after the Jamison family's disappearance, deer hunters stumbled across some skeletal remains in a remote area of the Eufaula Mountains, less than three miles from where the Jamison's truck had been found. The bodies were forensically identified as the remains of the Jamison family. However, the bodies were so badly decomposed that no cause of death could be determined. The reason for the Jamison family's strange behavior and the cause of their death remains a mystery to this day. What the fudge, my people? This case right here and the fourth case, the, the first and the fourth case, oh my God, oh my God, leaves me with so many questions. I won't be able to sleep, honestly. This was so nice watching, like, it was scary. Like, I'm afraid to go to the bathroom right now. But it's so fucking thrilling. Like, bro. Take care of you guys. One world, one love. Love yours. Peace out.